Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Well, sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last. <laughs> Drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. Yours truly, Bill Goodwin, the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, Mel Blank, and our guest, Francis Langford. For your Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for your everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Expertly blended and radiant roasted for rich, mellow, extra flavor. Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. Well, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, George and Gracie do their final broadcast of the current season. So for 13 weeks, you won't be hearing from radio's most charming comedian and most talented actor. Uh, But Gracie and I will be back in September. (laughs) So will Gracie's husband. (laughs) Meanwhile, let's look look in at the Burns' home... Where George and Gracie are figuring out where to spend their vacation. An idea that appeals to George is the big automobile race in Indianapolis. Uh, you know, uh, you know where I'd like to be tomorrow, Gracie? Indianapolis. Indianapolis? Indiana. Well, now, where do you want to be? Indianapolis or Indiana? <laughs> Indianapolis is in Indiana. Oh. Well, that makes it handy. You can visit both of them in one trip. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, that's where I'd like to go tomorrow to see the big race. Oh, well, it's just as well you won't be there, George. You'd lose. You'd bet on the wrong horse. (laughs) They race automobiles. Oh, well, then you'd be sure to lose. Horses can't run as fast as automobiles. (laughs) They don't use horses. Men run the automobiles around the track. Well, now, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. Men can't even run as fast as horses. <laughs> Look, at Indianapolis, the automobiles do not run against people. Hmm. Certainly different from Hollywood, isn't it? <laughs> um, I'm going to try once more. They have a big track where these automobiles, driven by men, whiz around about 150 miles an hour. Now, if I were there, I'd get a ticket. Well, if and... that isn't unfair... Now what? They drive 150 miles an hour and you get a ticket. (laughs) Let's forget about Indianapolis. What would you like to do on on, uh, on our vacation? Well, I'd I'd like to get a nice suntan. Well, that's easy. But it's such a long way to Florida. (laughs) You don't have to go to Florida. You can stay right here in Los Angeles and get a very dark color. I know, dear, but the smog washes right off. (laughs) I've got an idea. I'll run down to the travel bureau and get some folders on different resorts. Uh, where are the uh, car keys? In the filing cabinet. The filing cabinet? Mm-hmm. I wanted to put the house in order, so I organized an alphabetical filing system. Just look in the cabinet and you'll find the keys. Okay. Now, let's see. Keys would be under K. Hey, there's nothing under K but handkerchiefs. You've made a mistake. No, I haven't, no. Uh, when do you use handkerchiefs? When you sneeze. K for kachoo. <laughs> That's some system. Well, where are the car keys? Judge, the filing system won't do you any good if you don't learn to use it. Now think. Car keys, car keys. Oh, sure, they'll be on the sea. Well, for Pete's sake, what's a picture of your brother Willie doing filed on the sea? Judge, can't you figure anything out? Willie's in the Navy. <laughs> yeah. He's on a submarine. Yeah. A submarine is an undersea boat, so and I... And you file them under sea, sea, I see. <laughs> Look, uh, I'm a little slow in catching on to things. Suppose you tell me where the car keys are. Well, just where any intelligent person would look for them, under P. P? Well, certainly. Think about our car. 
Oh, I get it. P for Plymouth. That's not bad, Gracie. I apologize. No, no, not P for Plymouth. Don't you remember? We had our car painted green recently. Yeah. Well, was it bright green or pale green? Pale green. P for pale. <laughs> um, it couldn't be P for Plymouth. Well, of course not. Suppose we traded it in for a Pontiac. <laughs> Well, I won't try to figure it out. I've got the car keys. I'll settle for that. Come in. Good morning, all. Oh, hello, Good morning. Hello. Has your discussion concerning the destination of your vacation reached a satisfactory culmination? You get somebody to write a melody, you got something. <laughs> if that means have we decided where we're going, no. Well, then may I suggest a most delightful spot? An earthly paradise which lies in the vicinity of my hometown in Iowa. What's the name of it, Meredith? Lake Winnie Oscarbega Wandakichi Poo Poo in the Willows. <laughs> However, some folks want, would like to shorten the name. Some folks are right. Uh -huh. They uh, they want to call it Lake Winnie Oscarbega Wandakichi Poo Poo in the Pines. <laughs> yes, that's much shorter. Now the name was derived from an old Indian saying, which translated into English means. Woman love man, man love woman. What else? <laughs> we now have the mad Russian with us. <laughs> oh, that, Meredith, that's very interesting. Uh, interesting. Well, there's a most fascinating legend told about the lake. Would you care to hear it? No, I wouldn't. Well, once upon a time, there dwelt <laughs> on the shores of the lake a beautiful Indian princess. Her father was tall buffalo and her mother was little squirrel. I wonder what they saw in each other. <laughs> the uh, princess had many suitors, but she said the man she married must dive to the bottom of the lake and bring her an alligator. Oh, big eater, wasn't she? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> no man dared to try, because the alligators were very fierce, you know. However, along came a handsome Indian warrior. His father was Screaming Eagle, and his mother was Purple Pansy. <laughs> Those Indians come from the darndest combination. When he heard the desire of the princess, he didn't hesitate a moment, but he dove right to the bottom of the lake. Oh, and he, he brought her the alligator. No, never came up. <laughs> Beautiful legend, isn't it? <laughs> Meredith, you're leaving now. I am? You are. Well, you know best. Good day, all. Good day. What a schmo. <laughs> Well, at least he gave me an idea. It would be nice to spend our vacation at some lake and fish. Well, I've never tried to catch a fish there. Oh, uh, you'd enjoy it after I taught you what to do. First, I'd show you how to make your tackle. But fish are so slippery. I couldn't hold them after I tackled them. <laughs> never mind, I'll explain it later. Let's go down to the travel bureau and get some information about lakes. All right, dear. Ma, it'll be nice to relax for 13 weeks while Francis Langford takes over the show. Oh, will Francis be on the, uh, on the mm -hmm. show for us or something? Yeah, the sponsor sent us a letter about it this morning. Oh, that's wonderful news. I'd like to see the letter. I knew you would, dear, so I put it in the file for you. <laughs> Not that Chinese puzzle again. Now, George, you're just being stubborn. You can find it easily. Who's the letter about? Francis Langford. Mm -hmm. And what's the first thing you think of when you see Francis Langford? Well. Uh, better make it the second thing. I give up. You think of her husband. Now, who, who's she married to? John Hall. Mm -hmm. And who is he? He's a big, handsome, well-built movie star. So, look under S. Oh, S. S for star. No, S for should happen to me. Well, okay. <laughs> Sweetheart of Sigma Chi. Say, she's a mighty popular girl this time of year, Meredith. She and every other co-ed, Bill. Yes, these are big days on the campus, all right, with final exams just about over and that long-awaited graduation week in sight. Yes, there'll be a senior prom, of course, and a varsity show. 
And most of all, there'll be graduation itself, with Mom and Dad looking on proudly in the class of 1947 marching in the sheepskin parade. Moments that'll live in memory, these, belonging so truly and inescapably to the American scene. Reminds me how down through the years, Maxwell House coffee has become so real a part of the American scene. Coffee? Well, we Americans love it. It's our national drink. And it's a fact worth noting that today, more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee at any price. How explain this overwhelming preference? Flavor's the answer, of course. That good-to-the-last-drop Maxwell House flavor that comes from the skillful blending of these selected Latin American coffees. Manizales for mellowness. Medellins for richness. Other choice coffees for vigor. And Bucaramangas for full body. Adding up to great coffee at the peak of perfection. Friends, why not enjoy coffee at its absolute best? You can for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than you'd pay for the cheapest coffee sold. Just say, Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. One thing is settled. We'll spend our vacation at some lake. Mm -hmm. Oh, before we make a definite, George, I have a letter here inviting us to spend it with the O'Briens. That's my sister Pearl and her husband. Oh, so the O'Briens want us to visit them this summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they live in a nudist camp. (laughs) A nudist camp? Yeah, that's what this letter says. See, it says, come and stay with us. We have nothing on for the summer. That means they have nothing on their minds. Or any place else, either. <laughs> uh, Gracie. Well, I, I don't know about you, but I'm certainly not going to any nudist camp. They say the food is awful. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Gracie, the O'Briens do not want us to visit them at a nudist camp. They do, too. My sister Pearl says right here, she says, uh, please come. This will give us a chance to see more of each other. <laughs> Forget it. We won't visit the O'Briens. I'd rather go to the Ozarks. Oh, you have some Irish relatives, too. (laughs) Yeah, my hillbilly cousin, Max Ozark. Oh, I didn't know. Sammy's nephew, you know. Uh Uh-huh. Well, come on. We're going to the travel bureau and get some folders on lake resorts. Looks like a nice travel agency, George. Yeah, I'll speak to the fellow at the desk. Um, excuse me, sir. Could you recommend some nice lake resorts? How do you do? So you're planning a vacation. First, let us consider the mountains. Ah, they are breathtaking. There, one uh, fine scenic splendor. Mr. Uh, Mr. Look, <laughs> all we want to know is about some lakes. Well, I get to them later. How do you do? So you're planning a vacation. <laughs> Uh, I don't want you to get. I, I, I don't want you to get to them later. Tell me about the lakes now. Oh, sorry, Mister, I can't. This is the way I got the spiel memorized, and if I don't say it straight through, I get all mixed up. <laughs> How do you do? So you're... Aren't you the same man who sold us office furniture and real estate? Yeah, I got fired off of them jobs. How do you do? So you're planning a vacation? Please let us consider the mountain. Well, I can't understand why you got fired. Weak union. <laughs> How do you do? So you're planning a vacation. Gracie, stop interrupting the man. Mister, couldn't you possibly leave out the other stuff and get to the lakes? Well, I'll try. Uh, if you prefer lakes, we can recommend... Uh, uh, if you prefer... Uh, How, How do you do? do? I <laughs> At least... <laughs> At least speed it up. How do you do, 
Are you planning a vacation? First, let's consider the mountains. Oh, they are breathtaking. They are looking to sing five times. Let me your description. Oh, if you prefer lakes, we can recommend the oh, land yeah, of the 10,000 lakes. 10,000 lakes, yes. Which are as follows. Lake Adirondack, Lake Abercrombie, Lake Allegheny. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look, uh, Abercrombie. I, are you going to name? Are you going to name the ten thousand lakes? Yeah, that's part of the spiel, Mister. <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> well, thank goodness we finally got reservations at Lake Louise. Now, Gracie, our train leaves tonight. So we've got to pack in a hurry. You know how long it takes us to get our clothes together. Not this time, George. This time we can pack quickly. No stopping to look for things. Gracie, mm-hmm. you... All our clothes are filed alphabetically. <laughs> oh, no. George, I don't believe you appreciate my filing system. That's an understatement. The idea of filing my clothes in this thing. Where'd you ever find these wide drawers? Oh, that's your regular underwear, dear. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> By the way, where is my underwear? It should be under you. Now, what would your underwear be doing under me? <laughs> Not under you. Under you. George, you're nervous. <laughs> yeah, I fainted twice today. Gracie, where have you filed my underwear? Under X. Underwear? Yeah, underwear. Where have you filed it? Under X. Why? Not why, X. Look, Costello. <laughs> why did you file my underwear under X? Well, because every time I see you in your underwear, it reminds me that you need exercise. X for exercise. <laughs> well, here, pack it. Yes, dear. Now, be sure to take your green and purple necktie. You'll find it under J. <laughs> why? Not why. J. Don't stop that. <laughs> Why is the necktie under J? Well, who gave it to you? Your mother. Mm-hmm. And, and what does my mother call you? A great big... Under J, J under J. <laughs> Here it is. Oh. This looks like the same loud tie she gave my daddy one. My mother used to present my daddy with the strangest things. I know. I married one of them. <laughs> now, let's get back. Pa- Come in. Hello, George and Gracie. Who's well, the train? Oh, we're so glad to see you. Uh, please excuse the clothes lying around. George is such a messy packer. I know, Gracie. So is John. Really? Yes, I guess husbands are the same whether you're married to George Burns or John Hall. <laughs> you're cute. <laughs> Francis, we're delighted that you're taking over the Maxwell House coffee time for the summer. But are you nervous about it? You seem scared. Oh, well, that's because on the way over here, one of those Hollywood wolves tried to pick me up. Oh, how awful. He drove along beside me and yelled things like, Hey, beautiful, and where'd you get those pretty legs? And wow, what a build, and things like that. I had to walk around your block three times. Well, why didn't you come in? He hadn't finished. (laughs) I see. But his car finally ran out of gas right up the street. Well, good. That'll teach him not to... Come in. Hey, George, could I borrow some gas? <laughs> oh, so it was you. Francis, here's your wolf on the roof. Who? <laughs> Baby, why'd you run from me? I'm harmless, like the radio serial. I'm just plain Bill. Well, I'm not like the radio serial. I'm John's only wife. <laughs> oh, Mary. Yeah. Well, George, who's doing the summer show? Well, I've got a. You've got a surprise coming, Bill. This summer, Maxwell House Coffee will be sold by the sweetest voice and the best figure in radio. Now, wait a minute, George. You promised me a vacation. <laughs> Bill. Besides, you shouldn't say I've got the best figure in radio. I'm leaving out pictures, I yes, know. Yes, you're leaving out pictures. <laughs> you know, that's my one. Yes. I was talking about Frances Langford. She's doing the summer show. She is? Oh, I see. Well, then, Franny, I better tell you about Maxwell House coffee. Now, you see, Maxwell House... It's so is... wonderfully satisfying, so rich, delicious, and mellow. 
yes, yes. Uh, that famous flavor it's is a result, result of... of careful selection and blending of distinctive Latin American coffees, radiant roasted to perfection. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and it's economical, Francis. You see, Maxwell House... is the very best in coffee-drinking pleasure, yet it costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee you can buy. You're really telling a bell. <laughs> well, Francis, here's something you don't know. With more than a thousand brands to choose from... More people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. Yeah. And Maxwell House is always... Well... <laughs> Maxwell House is always good, good to, to the... the last drop. <laughs> that does it. I'm getting out of here. Where are you going, Bill? I have to take singing lessons. I'll get even with her. <laughs> Go on, kids. I'll see you in September. Bye, Bill. Well, Francis, Bill may think he has the best figure in radio, but we know who has the sweetest voice. How about a song? Thanks, Gracie, but my singing starts next week. Oh, please. To think something. No, really, I couldn't. Well, all right, then George will sing. Okay. <laughs> oh, 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 me misbehaving all by myself. <laughs> what would you like to hear, Gracie? <laughs> oh, you see, you've changed your mind, huh? Well, anything you want to sing, Francis? I'll sing You Belong to My Heart. All right. You my Spanish sometimes. Oh, I'd love to. You're quite a songbird, Francis. Almost as good as George. Oh, Gracie, don't say she's almost as good as me. She is as good. <laughs> of course, 
Francis, in some ways you and George are different. My husband will be pleased to hear that. <laughs> George, George has more power, more depth. But you're good. Would you like to hear him sing again? Uh, uh, no, Grace, it really oh, I, I... Of course you would. Pour it on a sugar throat. <laughs> Just open the birdcage of your mouth and make this room sound like Capistrano at swallow time. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, birds of Swedish singing and perfume flowers are bringing in the winners when I just passing by. Oh. <laughs> just passing by. You're unbelievable. <laughs> Did you hear that, Francis? Uh, just passing by. <laughs> Did you notice how easily those golden notes came sliding out? Well, they should come out easily. He flattens them first. <laughs> Oh, you do your very best this summer without him. It's a promise. Well, goodbye, George and Gracie. See you in September. Watch your heart, Francis. Thank goodbye. You. Let's finish the packing. Oh, by the way, um, where are my cigars? I put them in the filing cabinet. <laughs> Again, the file. Give me the cigars, please. No, George. You've got to learn to be self-reliant. You can find them. Oh, don't tell me. Let me figure this one out myself. All right. Let's see. Cigars are made from tobacco. Tobacco grows in the South. The South was the home of Robert E. Lee. <laughs> Robert E. Lee was a general. A general is the head of an army. So you put him under A for army, right? No, that's ridiculous. <laughs> well, then where did you put them? Under C for cigars. <laughs> <laughs> Again. It's almost time to catch our train. Has everything been taken care of? Yeah, the baggage company picked up our trunk an hour ago. I'm all dressed and ready. Oh, good. Let's get started. Did you put our train tickets and our reservation in the filing cabinet? I should say I didn't. Put George in there. They'd be safe. You and that filing system. I put them in a really safe place. Right here in my... Uh, right here in uh, the pocket of the... Uh, well, what's the matter? I put them in my coat pocket. Maybe. Oh, well, then get them out. It was the coat of my other suit. Oh, well, get them out of that. The other suit is in the trunk. <laughs> and the trunk? It's on its way to Lake Louise. Oh! Don't say it. Just file me on the deep for drip, that's all. Join us again next Thursday at the same time for our summer Maxwell House Coffee Show starring Francis Langford. With Toby Reed, Carmen Dragon, and his orchestra and chorus. That's right, and we know you'll enjoy them if you listen every Thursday night. And by the way, I'd like to tell you that a new George Burns and Gracie Allen record album will be ready shortly. Oh, yes, and maybe you'll enjoy listening to it, too. Goodbye, everybody. See you in September. Good night. The George Burns and Gracie Allen show is written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. Good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, the coffee that's always... Good to the last drop. Breakfast bother gets you down? Why the frown? Get instant Maxwell House. It's instant, it's new, it's good to the last drop, too. Yes, trust Maxwell House to make a better instant coffee. True coffee flavor, true coffee aroma, because it's all coffee made from America's favorite, the famous Maxwell House blend. And thrifty. A jar of instant Maxwell House makes fully as much as a pound of regular coffee. Get instant Maxwell House. Enjoy coffee that's instantly good to the last drop. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.